What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll go ahead and wait for you. Hit that like button. Make sure you leave a comment. The brother that I'm going to have on today, he may very well respond to comments. I know he watches the channel. He likes the channel. He's a very special guest, and there's a reason why, because he was a correctional officer at USP Big Sandy for, I believe, over five years. He's a big old boy, too, about six foot seven, six foot eight. Um, and my book is about Big Sandy, as most of you know. If you haven't grabbed the book, you should probably get it. And this interview just kind of goes with, you know, what this interview is about. So I think it's going to be a good one. I think this is a guy that's not going to hold back. He's not going to be afraid to say, you know, what was going on in those places, like some of the other people that we've had on. But anyway, Rodney, introduce yourself, tell the people who you are, and talk a little bit about you, brother. Hey, first of all, man, thank you, Jav, man, for having me on here, man. I, it, it's uh. I really do appreciate it, man. Um, I reach out to you, man. Um, I I was on YouTube, you know, uh, just browsing and uh, seeing your channel and uh, everything you've said, man, till right now has been 110% tr the truth that I, what I know of the federal prison system and what you've said about it and, you know, what conversations you've had with people about it. And uh, I really respect that, man, because – a lot of people's not like that, man. You know, they 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 get out and they act like they've done all this stuff and all this. And they, you know, they, you you know you know the the individuals who does stuff like that. But uh, my name's Rodney Mitchell. Like I said, uh, I'm from Manchester, Kentucky, man. Uh, worked at Big Sandy, like he said, for five years, and. Uh, Oh man, it it was a uh, when in 2010, uh, Warden Birkenbaugh, uh, I think he put in that uh, it was called control movements. You remember how everybody could go to the yard? Oh, I know. Uh, you don't you don't do that now. We'll, we'll talk a little um, bit about that, man. But let me let me ask you a couple questions, right? So I know because we talked briefly that you know I know you had a scholarship you were a basketball player you get out of college you got to get a job so you say all right i'm gonna go over to big sandy so you get a job at big sandy you go through your classes you get a job there you walk in there your first day tell the people what it's like are you scared are you nervous have you heard stories about big sandy tell us what it's like well my uh my uncle was a lieutenant and uh he'd been in probably four institutions my my uh, aunt was a nurse there, and she got stabbed with a needle by an AIDS patient. And that shit, that shit really hit me when she said that. And uh, I'm like, damn, hot dang, you know, man, you don't never know what could happen. And uh, my uncle just said, man, listen, just be you, and you uh, you will be fine, because he he knows how I am. And he said, just be you because I know you treat everybody equal, man. And I did, you know, and that's how I, that's how I done it. And that's how I survived it, you know. I, I can't say that that I, I was looking forward to somebody doing something to me because I never felt that way. But saying I was scared going in there, hell yeah, I was definitely scared. I was shaking scared, I'm telling you, man. Especially when that dude called me a fish. Like, you know, um, like young, coming in like a rookie, like a, he called me a, he called all those fish just joking around with us. Was it a prisoner? But man, it scared, it scared me, man. Really. I mean, I was really scared. A prisoner called you that? He called the whole group. He said, you, you knew fish like that. You know what I mean? You're and, a big, you're a big boy, man. What are you? Six, seven, six, eight. Um, when I play against Kenneth Farid there, he's about six eight, six nine. Um, I was about right there to him, so that tells you how big I am. It's I'm okay. about six, I'm a legit six six. I mean, I mean Michael Jordan on the dot. Oh, good. So let's talk a little bit about Big Sandy, man, and what it's like there, some of the stuff that you've seen, and whether or not it affected you. I'm going to ask you that first. Do you think some of the things that you've seen in Big Sandy affected you? Because I think maybe it did, just from talking to you briefly. Uh, a federal psychologist 
diagnosed me with PTSD right off the bat. He said I had a generalization anxiety or general generalized anxiety, uh, social anxiety, like crowds, loud noises. Always bothers me, man. It, it was, was that after you left the BOP, you ended up getting medically discharged from there, right? Yeah, I broke my back in three places, like I mean, you was talking, and uh, it's it's been a it's been a it's been a hot it's been a uh, long road, man. Just uh just to be have a normal life without pain, man. You know what I mean? Because when you mess your back up, it, it, ain't, it ain't no joke, especially being tall. I can only imagine. So. How long were you working there before something finally happened where you were like, holy shit, this is it. This is Two real. weeks. <laughs> Two weeks kicked off in jail. Huh? What happened? Tell the people what happened. All right. I was in B2. Barker was over beside of me. He's a redheaded kid. And uh, control, when Control hey, comes over the radio and says, all available radio staff, that means bad. <laughs> So when I got in there, dudes was slinging trays, and I was going, ducking like yes to miss the trays. So I got under the, you know, where you sit there and eat. I got under that thing and just sit there. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. What could you do? It's a crazy place. Let me ask you this. When... Hit... My bad, Chad. Go ahead. No, you're right. When you're, when you're in there, I don't want to stop you. Go, You go. You tell us what was going on. I apologize. Well, I mean, those dudes, like, it was just like a WWE wrestling match. Hitting dudes overhead, you know, with trays, slinging and hitting them in the, in the neck. Eyeing the dudes coming at me. Hey, help. <laughs> I mean, hit, hit. I woke my eyes up quick right there. I mean, I, I, if I, if I say I'm, I was always nervous going in that prison, no matter what the circumstances was. So I would be lying if I said I was ne- I, w- I wasn't nervous. I always, I don't know, man. It made me tense up when that door. I hear that door is shut, man, because I knew eight hours or maybe sixteen hours, because a lot of CEOs was afraid to come in at times, man, for real. So they bang in. Cops, they call in and say, hey, man, I'm sick because they know something's going on at the prison. They don't want to be there when it's happening. <laughs> yep. Like, or like you got family members, you know, up that way. I, I sort of do, but not like most of them in there. They could call their brother or sister and say, hey, <laughs> call in for a few days. Take some at a time that you got, got the waste, you know. <laughs> I hear you. So let me let me ask you this. You know, you you know, sometimes you get COs that are assholes. Sometimes you get guys that just want to come in and do their job. Sometimes uh-huh. you got guys that are like, look, man, as long as you ain't raping, robbing, or killing, man, do what you guys want to do. What type of dude were you? The last sentence you just said. I done my job. I mean, I done my job to the fullest extent that I could do it. Um they were. I, I never cut no corners because I, I, I always told if you cut corners, you know, something something will happen. I never cut corners. Um, That's fine, man. But, it, it's just. I feel like it. I feel like it affected you, bro. Like I can see that it affected you, man. I, I mean, dude, you at night you don't even have a clue, man. It's, it's so hard to insomnia so bad. Like, like me and you talking about when I was talking about that guy, that guy that I, I, an individual I seen getting something done to him that he wasn't supposed to, and screaming, and the dude I couldn't do nothing about it. Hold on, let me. That right there, man. That that just uh, that still sticks with me right now, man. It's, it, it's right here when I go to sleep. It's right here on my back, man. It sticks right here. So there's there was you're talking about a rape, right? Dude gets oh, raped. yeah, yeah. No. Dude gets raped in federal prison. Is he a white dude, black dude, Spanish dude? Who is it? He's a black dude, and a Latin king's raped him. The Latin king's raped a black dude? Yeah, and the dude had like eight months to the door, man. Is in the unit or in the hole or where? No, he was in B1. 
You said you, you couldn't what, help him. Won, I want to know why you couldn't help him. Was he locked in? You couldn't unlock the door? You no, he, he he was a shot caller. He hollered at his homeboys. He said, if you do anything, he said, I'll have them, stay, I'll have them poke you. He said, they'll, they'll slay you. He said, I'm doing what I need to do, and then, then you can come in here. <laughs> that that sounds crazy, bro. Like that's that's a wild. Well, I mean, what, what what can I do? You you work there. What do you? What else you gonna do? You gotta. I don't know, man. You gotta exactly. I can't run. I gotta let him finish and then do the report on that dude. That's what affected me the most was the dude telling me, you know, him doing that to him all the time. And the CEO's not knowing about this. I don't understand it. How about we do this? How about how about you find the report and send it to me? You don't have to look for it now. I'd like to read it. But no, I, I, I'm just saying. I just wanted to peek and see. It. See, it. yeah, that's one of my. Uh, that's a memo right there. I want to tell you this, right? Because you got listen to me. You got that memo, right? And what I want, what I want is, I want this to resonate because some young kids watching this show right now. And I want them to know that oh, this yeah, shit man, really I, happens. I, and I want people I, to know. I, hold on, let me let me let me. So one hundred ten percent with you on the kids, man. I, I, kids, that's our future, man. So they need to get this in their mind, man. This me, ain't no joke. Let me let me say this real quick, Rodney, because some little kid is watching this. I want you to know that you know you think man these gang members aren't doing this type of that gang would never do that. That group of guys, hell no. Well, guess what? This man has the report, man. This shit happens, bro. Shit happens that you think don't happen. Dudes that you think ain't raping people. And there's white dudes in there that do the same shit where they act like they're the big, cool-ass white dude. I'm a tough guy. And later on that night, man, he's, he's he's putting that wood on someone. And I want dudes to know that shit, man. I want you to know that this yep. shit happens. I don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic. This shit happens. And I'm, I, I am going to want that report. But anyway, let's let's talk. You ain't got a dick through there. Let's talk a little bit more about Big Sandy. Um, So when a guy comes to your unit, right? They say, hey, this guy's going to sell 146. What if I come to your unit? I'm like, dude, I don't want to go to 146. I got a homeboy in 157. Can I pick my own selly? Uh, man, most of the time, if, uh, if it works out for the best, yeah. I mean, I, I won't, I'm not going to put myself in a position where if you go in there with a, with a guy and he don't want you in there, well, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to be opening that door and one of y'all ain't going to have no teeth or you're going to be head in the toilet, you know? But the truth is I can pick my own celly in federal prison, right? Why, hell yeah, sort of, 100%. So now let's talk about some of the other stuff. I mean, you talked about that. That's That's got to be one. Of, I mean, obviously you're affected, bro. I mean, it's it's plain. It's plain to see. And I'm glad that people can see it from this aspect, right? Because it does affect, it affects prisoners. It also affects the cops. It also affects the administration, people that, you know, had to deal with that type of stuff and see this type of violence, this level of violence. So let's talk about some of the other violent things that you've seen. And it's not all about violence. We're going to get to some other spots. But the violence that you see in there, right, what's one of the worst violent things that you've seen as far as a stabbing or anything like that? You remember an inmate named Kirby? White dude, old. Oh, I thought it's about White Kirby that was an armed guy. But no, I... I don't remember. Yeah, it's him. It's him. Oh, old white dude? Yeah, A3. Uh, was he an arm guy? Yep. Yeah, I got a picture of him right here on my phone. But go ahead. Keep talking. Let the people know what's but going anyway, on. But anyway, they put his head through the bars, man, and crushed it. He did end up getting Kirby. I know that they ended up getting Kirby. He had been through a bunch of stuff. I mean, they, 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 they messed him up pretty bad, man, for real. And I think it was over... Maybe a a word, just one more. Yep. That's old Kirby. Yeah, they, they put his head between them bars and tried to put try to try to kick it in kick it in. Like crush his skull. Let me tell you Over how I know word. let me tell you how I know Kirby. I was with him in, in USP Lee, right? And uh I remember he had got knocked out, he had his teeth kicked out. He he ended up dropping out of the gang, I believe. Um, I had an incident with Kirby. That's why I got his picture. I was going to do a story about it where at the poker table, I slapped him at the poker table. That don't make me a tough guy. And eventually he went to Pollock. And I think that he checked in in Pollock and then was transferred over to Big Sandy and they crushed him in Big Sandy. Oh, uh, let's see. I, I know exactly who done it because I was the first one cuffed to do. He had glasses, real skinny. I can't think of his name. 
I think he was a uh, uh, soldiers of our iron culture. Our, our cult, culture. So he's a sack guy. Sack. Maybe. Yeah, sack. Uh, but yeah, uh, I remember uh, there was always one inmate that in- intimidated the hell out of me, man. He was an A1 or A2, like a big red headed, stocky dude, man. About 6'2, 6'3 from Texas. I know exactly Thank you. Hold name, on, man. let me stop you. Swift, Scott Reisendorf. Reisendorfer, that's it. Dude, that dude intimidated me, man, for real. Tell you a story the way about, he conducted himself. Let me tell you a story about Scott and, and the people too, right? Because we we should do a, a little thing about Swift, Scott Reisendorf. He, uh, I believe he's from Oklahoma, was a Texas AB, right? Um, very right. violent, very dangerous. And you probably worked there when they went in the cell and they crushed one of their homeboys on the Super Bowl. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. One of the most dangerous there. dudes you can meet in prison. I talk about him in my book. I was beefing with him in the book. So when you get the book, you'll be able to read that part. But you know what? I heard that Swift is now a full-fledged Christian, bro. Can you believe that? What? Are you serious? He turned his I mean, that's, around, I, I, glory to God, I, I, that's fine. But I mean... I would have never thought in a thousand years. No way. Yeah, so tell the people why you felt intimidated by him. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, it was dudes told me a few things about him. He's like, man, he, he don't play no games, you know. He's the real deal. So, well, so, he yeah. intimidated me. He intimidated me. You, you want to know why, you know, I felt that way. Well, I, I heard rumors about him, you know. I heard that he, he, he put in a couple – he put in, a, you know, a couple of pieces of work, I guess, on some on some dudes, and I guess they was impressed with this thing. And don't don't get, don't get me wrong now, this guy is physically stout, looks like a big country strong boy. You know what I mean? I mean, you ha- you have to agree with me. I mean, he was a big old honky. I agree with that. I mean, I, I just I'm just saying I'd hate to tangle with him, man. You know what I mean? That was the one that I, I would. Would not want to tangle with at that time. But now. Well, they did something really bad. They did something really bad to a dude at Big Sandy. They paralyzed one of their homeboys. I believe it was on Super Bowl yeah. Sunday. And he got an additional five out there in the, out in the unit hollering the M word. Yeah. That's, that's the incident. So now let's talk a little bit about this, right? When you do start working at the prison, do the guards tell you, like, hey, man, be careful in this place, man. Don't. Don't do this and don't do that. Do they tell you stuff like that? Well, you, you how we started out, we we went two week like training, like say I went to A one with Officer Blackburn. I don't know if you know Officer Blackburn. Oh, Blackburn I like very old well, Blackburn, man. Old laid back Blackburn, cool as hell. Uh, he just said, man, you know. As long as you treat these dudes like a human being with respect, you're gonna get respect back, man. And and try to stay the same throughout your whole time. And uh don't change, you know. Don't be an asshole one day and be a nice guy the next. You can't do that. No doubt. Um, let me ask you this. Were there cops ever you ever work in the shoe? Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. I got put on investigation done. Shoe. You. you were put under investigation? Yeah, just because I didn't pat a dude down. I mean, uh, I didn't pat his uh, right leg down. One of the cops wrote you up or told on you? No. Uh, I heard Silva. <laughs> it was really my fault, man, but I was following the officers that was in front of me. That was my senior officer, you know what I mean? They've worked in the shoe. They know how it is. I, I mean, that's my first time in there. Uh, I got the dude out of cell cuffed him, uh, pad him down. No, I know I didn't want him. I didn't mail detect him. You know how they, you got to get mail detected before you go back in the cell. And uh, I, I didn't. And he walked straight out. And Silva said, "What the? What'd you do, Mitchell?" I said, "What are you looking at me for?" <laughs> I said, I didn't do nothing, man. I was just following the, the pack. <laughs> and uh, he ended up three days before he left, he wrote a uh, 
They put me on an investigation over that. Let me ask you this, right? In the shoe, have you ever experienced cops where they're like, you know what, man? I'd like to punch this dude's head off. Or they wanted to beat up some prisoners. Or Does that shit happen? Keep it real, man. Because I brought you on the show because I think you're a real dude. I I don't I I ain't got nothing to hide. I really don't. It happened. I promise you. I prevented it from happening one day. And they got mad and hell at me, man. And I said, Hell well, man. I can care less because they 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 said you want that wreck job, don't you? I said, Man, I ain't worried about that, man. You ain't gonna you treat people like a human being, man. You ain't gonna go in there and beat on this dude, man. He's a little dude anyway. But I mean he was throwing pisses. But Fuck, man. You don't go five deep on somebody like that. Excuse my language, man. I apologize. Some of them guys want to go in there and they say, hey, look, man, this dude's throwing piss. He's shitting down the officers. We're going to pound his head into the wall. Let's do it. Yep. It happened three or four times. You ever, you ever see anybody get four-pointed to the, to the bed? Mm, maybe one time, yeah. This Indian went for a suicide attempt, and he almost really done it. You know how you're not supposed to do it like that? Supposed to go that? Well, he done that. Hey, this close, man. I was gone. For real. Let me ask you another question. You're at Big Sandy. You're over there. What unit did you work when you first started? A3? Uh, A3, we had different training posts, uh, but after I got seniority out, I went to A side and tried to clean A, A, A4 up a little bit, but I couldn't do nothing with it. I ask you that to ask you this, Rodney. You ever worked a unit where there were shot callers in there? Oh, Yeah. Absolutely. I had a shot caller on my work detail when I was a recreation specialist. That's when they brought the Mexican Mafia in um, from St. Quentin. Um, the hell oh, was Fox. his name, man? You might be talking about Fox. Who? Fox. Ball head guy, kind of chubby. Fox. Fox and Bobby were there when you when you worked there probably, right? Yep. Fox, Fox had to be second the second one because Bobby was gone. He went to Hazleton or somewhere or Lee. He went to USP Lee, didn't he? Fox ended up coming to USP Lee when they brought all the Southsiders over there. They were transferring right. people from Big Sandy around 2010, 9 or 10, and they were bringing all them dudes in there. I want to say in 2010. But um, let's talk a little bit about this, right? What was Mona? You ever had to respond to a murder at Big Sandy? Well, I'm not going to say a murder, but I remember one dude talking there a while ago, man. He said sometimes a dude to get hit, man, barely get hit and die. And then he said some dudes get hit 90 times and not die. I mean, he is so dead on the nail on that, man. He's right because it just takes that one little time, man, to get hit. You got, something and, in front of, uh, you got something in front of that camera. Move it over a little bit. Buddy, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, uh, that that was the one I was telling you about with the dude got hit in the back of the head. With the, you know how they took him out there? They just picked him up in the chair and, and took him out. <laughs> he was That's how out, out he was, man. He crushed his skull in, man. That dude said, man. He screamed out. He said, you ain't getting no more in my commissary. Like that. Boom. Back of head. Everybody went quiet. Everybody started getting eyes. You know how it moved quick. Tiptoeing. Everybody. <laughs> it's funny, man. Everybody running to their cell. Lockdown. Wait a minute. Let me get some eyes. See you. Hurry up. You know. I always let everybody get what they needed, man, you know, because, like I said, you know, you got to treat uh, a human being like a human being, man, not like a, a piece of garbage. 
So once you once you left there, you're not working there no more. You get hurt. You get you end up going getting transferred over to an FCI, and you know it's probably not jumping too much over there. But and then you end up getting hurt, and, and you're done with the BOP now. Does it? You know, at nighttime, man, you ever see that shit in your dreams, man? I. When I'm watching your show, it's like flashbacks. I was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, it, it, it hits me. I'm like, every time somebody will say a name, I'm like, damn, man. How, how? Yeah, I remember him now. You know, I'm like, it's just, uh, it's just, people just don't realize how quickly a situation can turn violent. So, like, from zero to 101 seconds. All it takes is somebody to say the wrong word. One one wrong word. You ever leave work and feel bad when you see someone get stabbed, go home, and be like, damn, man. Well, usually they was they was smiling or acting crazy in hell, so I didn't know how to react to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, damn, man. I just got standing around here. I heard like a mother, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, man, I hope I ain't blow long. And I was like, this dude right here, man, he's he, he's laughing over a, a, a long as collapsed on it. <laughs> Why do you think these dudes commit this, these, these viciously violent assaults on each other, bro? Protection. Protection. 100% protection. Scared to death. Think people go stab people because they don't want it, they don't want it to happen to them, so they're like, yo, I'm going to hit this dude. Damn straight. I don't hit this dude. My shot caller ordered me to hit this dude. I better hit him. If not, I'm going to get killed. Well, let me ask you this question. Use independent white, right? Go ahead and interview me. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I like to find out a little bit about you, too. Um, did you ever get in a situation like that? Was I ever in a situation where I had to go do something that I didn't want to do? I mean, did he, he tell you to do something and, and you didn't do it? No, I always did it because <laughs> I didn't want the repercussions. There was a time when, you know, we had to do something to someone for, you know, sitting at a, at a table, man, that he wasn't, he was just, dude, it was just a really bad situation where the dude sat at the table and, you know, the big homie, he wanted him, he wanted him hit, man, because he sat at the table. And I'm like, man, this is the dumbest shit ever. And yeah, man, I, I did something that I didn't want to do, man. And I, that's one thing that I still regret to this day where, you know, we beat up this old man, bro. I was younger. I mean, at the time he was about my age now, but I was 28, 29, big old boy. And you know what? We did something that I, I regret, man. And it does. I know you are doing them burpees in there, Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I've done some things I haven't wanted to do. So now that you're now that you're no longer working at Big Sandy and you, and, you, and you're free, man, you ever have situations make you cry, man? All the time. I'm I'm not I'm not ashamed to say it. You're I honestly believe this. You're not a man if you don't got feelings, man. A true man, a true real man has got has got feelings, and and I, I cry all the time, man. I think a lot of the cops, yes, man. I do. A lot of the cops, they, they act like that stuff don't affect them. And then 20 years later, when they retire, that shit affects them. I had another officer reach out to me. He's actually a dude that grabbed me and carried me to the hospital when I got stabbed. And you know what? I know that this affects him, man. And, you know, it took all of them. And he was a tough guy at the prison. Make no mistakes. I remember him going in there, shooting the gun on a dude. And that was a white dude that had a knife. This dude, he was the dude that always responded. And I can tell that today, 20 years later, that that shit affects him, man, when he talks to me. Right, I think I it, did. He have red hair, but spiked up. No, this is a guy that worked at USP Lee. He might come on the show too. Oh, okay. USP but I know Lee. I like to watch it. He'll probably be on. Uh, you know the guy uh, that you talked about, Barker. I know Barker with the red hair. He ended up going down to Lexington. He's Lieutenant Lexington. Yeah, that's where he. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah, want. My, uh, I don't want you to talk about any of your coworkers and, and them have them calling you and threatening you or nothing, but. I'm going to talk a little bit about Barker. Trust me, it won't call me. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about Barker. Barker was that dude, right? Tough guy, smash you, bounce your head off the wall. You know, keeping it real, you throw piss on him, he's probably going to bounce your head off the wall later on. Um, But you know what? I've had interactions with him where 
he treated me like a man where men respect men. You know, like I'm not going to worry about him trying to bounce my head off the wall because I'm not going to throw piss on him. You know what I mean? But um, he was yeah, definitely sure. a hardcore cop. Yep, he uh, he did. He was on the uh, he was on the S O R T. You know what that means? Special Operations Response Team. Um, Some guys enjoy that stuff, right? Dude, I mean, they, it's like they was dying. To, I'm like, man, are you serious? <laughs> I could give a shit less, you know, honestly. I, I mean, no, I, I take it back. I didn't get, I just didn't care for that type of stuff in, in the prison set. You know what I mean? I just wanted to do my thing and get out of there. You guys want to be gung-ho, they're making a career out of it, and they're like, yo, I want to be on the team. I want to run in there and smash them dudes. Do you get dudes like that? Oh, oh yeah, my head. It, it, you wouldn't believe, man, that the guys that got picked on in, in school and shit that worked at, worked at that prison. <laughs> I'm being straight with you, man. I, I, I mean, if anybody wants to say anything about me, comment below. I don't care. Hey, man, I tell it like it is, like you said. We tell it like it is, like the, ra uh, the razor wire, man. <laughs> Once it cuts you, it cuts you. That's it, man. It's it's real and it's raw. I'm going to get ready to close the show, right? And, you know, because you were on the other side, I'm just going to shoot straight with you. You're from Kentucky. You're a basketball player. You love basketball. You got a Jordan hat on. You got a bunch of tattoos. You don't strike people as the regular type of, you know, CO that would work at Big Sandy. But I'm sure that yeah. you grew up and you played, you hooped with, with some black dudes, right? Yeah, I hooped hoop with some, some NBA dudes, man. So, you know, you grew up around dudes like that. So I'm sure, man, when you get cops, man, in prison that'll interact with blacks, interact with, with white dudes and Hispanics, because you're you, you're young. You're you're part of that that world. You just you happen to be on that side. You know what I mean? That doesn't make you a bad guy. But you can interact, you can talk better to people instead of like some old grumpy ass white dude that's a cop that's like sixty and he's still a cop. Get over there, boy, get on the wall. People ain't trying to hear that shit. So I know you were the type of cop that could intermingle, man, and just the way that I talked to you. Oh, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a problem communi communication with with the prisoners, not one bit. Uh, matter of fact, you know, you develop friendships, man. Not not friendships, but like. Here, let me, let me stop you. Let me stop, stop you because you. what you're saying, you're not supposed to say according to the CO manual, probably. You're not supposed to have relationships, but you know what? You see these dudes every day. You're like, man, that dude's an all right dude, man. I feel bad. That dude's got life. I feel bad for that dude. He's got a nonviolent right. drug offense and he's got life. I agree hundred percent, man. I mean, it ain't like now I reached them something, nothing like that. You know what I mean? No, I, I've, I've never done nothing like that. Uh, my morals was so strong like that. I, I, I just couldn't never do it, man. But I know it was going on while I was there. It was going on for sure. Right the at the end. The cook just got I arrested over there and got like 15 years for it, right? What now? You might not know this, but one of the cooks over there ended up. Oh, yeah. I know Hank Williams. Yeah, I know. I, I knew that was coming. Seen it. I think his wife was an SIS lieutenant at one time, right? He was a cook supervisor, man. Making probably $30, $39, 40 there. He's been there for, I think he's been there since it opened, man. I know, exactly. I know exactly who he is. And his wife was an SIS officer at one time. Yep. So you're right. Um, People, man, I don't know, man. He was bringing in some hardcore shit, though, man. You know? They just gave him a bunch of time, too, man. Um, but but listen, we've been on here, we've been on here for a while, Rodney. Right. So before we right. go, man, there's some young boy watching this show right now. Some young man, right? Some twenty year old or some fifteen year old, right? Or maybe it's some twenty five right. year old, or maybe it's some dude that you know never made it to a USP, but he's on the wrong track, and if he gets busted again, he's going to a USP. What message would you give them, man? Man, uh, the kids are, are our future, man. Uh, whether we want to wrap that around our necks or not and believe it, but the kids and, you know, 
my like my brother, he works at the federal prison. You know that generation. Uh, so I felt good because I felt like I was highly influenced on him. You know what I mean to get that job, and that and I feel proud about that. You know, but he busted his ass too to get that job. You know what I mean? But that's that's another example. You work hard in life, and good things happen, man. You know what I mean? I, I always you. worked hard at everything I've done. If I, if I, my craft, if I'd done something, my craft was, it was on point. But, uh, like you, but my final message to kids, man, I mean, they need to stick with the right crowd, man. Once you start hanging out with that wrong crowd, it's going to keep dragging you on down deeper in that, that depth of the black. You know what I mean? It keeps getting blacker, blacker, blacker. And then finally you're going to look up and you can't see shit. You're like, what's going on, man? Be in the front, man. You know what I mean? Be the one that's leading. Be the, le- be the leader. Be the leader. I for, mean, I'm not a leader, leader for good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, bro. I just said, be the leader for good. I mean, that's the message, right? Like you don't want to, oh, end up, yeah. you don't want to end up in federal prison. You don't want to end up in there having to stab someone so that they won't stab you. Right. Absolutely. I agree a hundred percent, man. Uh, Listen, Rodney, man, I appreciate you. Coming on. I, got there, I think they, they stabbed the CO. Uh, yeah. They stabbed the CO at Macquarie, man. Um, I think his name might inmate Rose. Did you hear about that? I don't know. I could Google it. Google inmate Rose, uh, USP McQuarrie stabs three officers. I'm gonna. Like, I'll, I'll definitely check that. Come out. on, with Randall Asher. That was bad. That almost uh, ended bad. I almost ended a death. But listen, man, I'm I don't gonna know get, how to do that to life anyway. I'm gonna get ready to close the show, right? Maybe we'll talk about that on a part two. But I definitely appreciate you coming on the show, man, sharing your experiences from the other side. I mean, it's obvious that, you know, when you talk about this stuff, it chokes you up because you weren't like that before we started talking. Um, But once we got on the camera and started talking, I see that it affects you. But I'm going to tell people, man, if you haven't already, man, share this video, subscribe, leave a comment. And we're about to go out of here, man. With respect, Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Until tomorrow, we're out. (laughs) 